I'm not sure about you, but I love to find the best tech deals that I can get. I call them the best bang for buck. You know, I want to get the best performance for my budget. And if your budget is roughly around $1,500 for a PC, you can get an absolute beast of a workstation. Someone calls it a gaming PC. I call it a workstation because this is roughly the price of a MacBook Air and it is so much better in pretty much every single aspect. And it's upgradable. If you want to mix and match things, get certain things better than the other one, you can do that. So in this video, I'm going to show you the best PC you can build as a creator for around $1,500 and some of the upgrades if your budget allows. So then first for around $1,500, in fact, what I'm seeing right now, the pricing, it is $1,494.89. So hopefully by the time you're watching this, it's going to be actually a little bit cheaper. But for motherboard, we're going to be getting the Gigabyte Z790 Gaming X AX motherboard. I know this is a gaming motherboard, but it's actually very good for creators because it offers a lot of PCIe expansions, meaning as well as M.2 storage. DDR5 memory, pretty good I.O. connectivity, everything you want from this is pretty much in there and really there isn't anything better for that price point. Now for the CPU we're going to be using 14700K. So very important note before we go on to the CPU at different platforms. Since filming this video there has been a little bit of a development of an issue on an Intel platform and I don't want this video to be Intel versus AMD kind of a debate but rather giving you the best options as a creator. Creator. So number one, if you don't know what the issue is about and how what's going on, then I highly recommend checking out my video about the issue. Number two, if you don't know how to fix the issue or get the best support for that issue, if you're encountering any of the issues, then I highly recommend checking that one out as well so you know what you're getting yourself into. Number three, since releasing the video, I'm actually updating some of the links in the description below as well to offer you an AMD platform alternative as well. So even though I don't mention this in the video, there will be links for AMD platform options in the description below. The only thing that's going to change is the motherboard and the CPU, perhaps even RAM, but all the rest of the parts in this video are still related to you as well. The upside for going with AMD is that there is no reported instability issues, perhaps a little bit of a lower RAM support or lower RAM speed support IMC. You're also going to get a much better upgrade path because the platform continues a little bit longer so you can upgrade to Ryzen 9000 and beyond. In terms of performance right now at this point you're probably going to get a little bit less bang for buck with AMD platform but it's up to you to decide if you want to go with the issue or potential fix of the issue or AMD platform that seems to be a little bit more solid option right now. And the same goes for the upgrades later on in the video. If you're looking for upgrades, there will be AMD upgrade options down in the description there as well. So just follow those links in the description. It'll be very clear there. And last very important note is whether you go in AMD or Intel or buying any of the parts, highly recommend finding a reputable retailer or a shop where you know that you can get easy returns or easy swaps or RMAs whenever whatever happens with your PC. So if you have anything wrong, you can get an easy fix. And there is a little trick up its sleeve if you go with that motherboard and this CPU combo because you can run it faster than what it actually says here. So this is $329. Oh my goodness, this is so much cheaper than when I looked at it. So right now you can get it even cheaper. So I prepared for this a couple of days ago and it's already so much cheaper. So go check out the links in the description below. Maybe you can find these deals as well. This 14700K has eight P cores. The super fast supports very good memory. If you haven't seen the review yet, go check it out on the channel. It's just a very good option. To cool that beast, we're going to have to use Arctic Liquid Freezer 3 360mm AIO, which also comes already in the box with the CPU bracket for the LGA 1700 socket. So that helps your CPU not to bend over time and usually you have to pay extra for that, but this is already included with this cooler. It's very quiet and performs exceptionally well. Now for the SSDs, we have two options. For OS, we're going to be going with the WD Blue SN580, one terabyte drive. It's not the fastest in the sequential read and write speeds, but it's very good for programs and operating systems and so on. If you have a little bit more budget to spend, highly recommend checking out my SSD guide and checking out which one terabyte drive I would go for. If you have extra $20, $30, go with the Solidine P44 Pro. But at this point, I'm trying to give you the best performance for your money, and that is going to be 
this. For the project driver, we're going to be using the Cardia Z440 from Team Group. Very good drive as well. This has DRAM now which is a little bit better in sequential read and write speeds, but also very high terabyte written spec. I've talked about so much about this drive. Very good option for $75. For RAM, we'll be using the 5600 megahertz RAM, 64 gigabytes from Corsair Vengeance. And for Creator, 64 gigabytes is a really nice sweet spot. It's not too much that you might know if I need that much, but it's definitely better than 32 gigabytes. It's going to be a bottleneck at that and $1,500. This will give you 64 gigabytes of RAM. Would you believe that? To be honest, as I'm going through this list of parts, I just can't believe how beast of a PC someone's going to build for $1,500. Now for GPU, that's the exciting bit for everybody, right? But not necessarily the most important thing as a creator because you can easily bottleneck your PC by some other parts. So for the GPU, we're going with the Intel Arc A770 from Sparkle. This is $280 and it's extremely good for video and photo editing. If you're doing 3D, then I highly recommend going with an RTX 3060 from previous video. Go check out the first part because Nvidia drivers, Nvidia cards work so much better for 3D, any of the 3d applications amd not so good for 3d either it's really for that but for video editing especially in adobe premiere pro this is incredible gpu if you're using davinci resolve i really recommend checking out the gpu guide or the gpu video for that one because there you might get better bang for buck for some of the amd cars like the 7800 xt or so on so have a look at the pricing and that benchmark video if you're using DaVinci Resolve. But for general photo and video editing in Adobe applications, this guy is the one to go for. For the PSU, we're using this guy from Animax. This is the 850 watt power supply, $100 roughly. It's ATX 3.0 supported, which means that later on, if you go with NVIDIA 40 series GPU that requires the 12 volt high power cable, you don't have to use any extensions. It's native plug just plugs in it's going to be very easy very easy cable management very high quality parts around max users i've worked with them before very good power supply 850 watts it's plenty to power everything in your pc and for the case it's going to be the same fractal focus to black now the case bit is the one that you might want to choose something else and i'm happy if you choose something else there's so many different options out there just type something in on amazon and anything's really going to fit but i've got a little bit of a sweet spot for the fractal pc cases because very minimalistic now you should be getting this pc for less than 1500 dollars at the time of me making this video the total is 1494 dollars and 89 cents but i saw some of the prices were actually cheaper than what i got so you might get a better deal when you're watching the video that's why i highly recommend checking out the latest pricing in the description below through those links now if you have a little bit extra budget and you can stretch it roughly to 2200 dollars then here are some of the upgrades that i would go for the motherboard i would upgrade to gigabyte z 790 aero g which goes for 250 dollars so it's extra 50 dollar upgrade but this also gets you USB-C video output. So if you're a creator who uses some of the tablets that need video output through USB-C, this motherboard allows you to do that. Not a lot of motherboards allow you to do that, especially gaming motherboards, but this one does. It's quite a nice looking motherboard, good IO, fast front panel USB-C, and plenty of M.2 storage all together. Now, the CPU we're not going to be upgrading, but if you use any of the Gigabyte Z790 motherboards or Z690 motherboards with Intel's 13700K, 13900K or 14700K or 14900K, you can actually run those CPUs at 6 gigahertz. This is not available in any of the other motherboard and CPU combination but just the Gigabyte Z690 and Z790 motherboards, which is also true for the previous motherboard that I just mentioned earlier on in this video. So you can run this 14700K at six gigahertz, which you can do very easily by just one click in the BIOS. If you don't know how to do that, check out my video on it and it's easy to do. The cool is gonna stay the same, but for the SSD, we're gonna be upgrading to Solidime P44 Pro one terabyte drive. Now this is $90 for one terabyte. It's not the best pricing for per terabyte, but this is the fastest SSD I have tried on the channel. So if you're running programs and operating system, the random read and write speeds of this one is the best one ever that I have tested on PCI Gen 4. Yeah, Gen 5 drives will go a little bit faster, but in terms of best bang for buck Gen 4, this is incredible drive now the project drive we would actually upgrade to two terabyte one which is the western digital black that i saw was very good price in there 
Now you can check out the two terabyte version of the Cardia Z440 as well, but I think this black right now is a better price SN850X super fast drive. Unfortunately, this solid dime two terabyte drive for the P44 Pro is a lot more expensive and kind of don't make sense. That's why I'm recommending this SN850X from WD. The RAM stays the same, but now the GPU upgrade is going to be huge. We're going to be jumping from the Arc A770 to RTX 4070 Ti Super. Now, why the Ti Super and why not anything else? The Ti Super is actually a baby version of the RTX 4080 and 4080 Super. It's exactly the same GPU die, but just a cut down version. So this is the first one where you're gonna get 16 gigabytes of VRAM, which is huge for any of the 3D and video creators. And in terms of bang for buck, you're not going to get much more performance on the 4080 or 4080 Super, but the price will go higher a lot more. This guy is good at doing anything, video, photo, 3D. Now, it's not necessarily the best at video editing. If you want the best bang for buck for video editing, highly recommend checking out the GPU guide because some of the AMD GPUs are better. But if you do a bit of video editing and 3D, and this guy outperforms this. For 3D, this guy is so much better than any of the competition. I'm not saying like maybe 30, 40%, sometimes multiple times better than what AMD offers. So that's like, there's no competition for 3D. If you're doing any 3D, just don't go with anything else but Nvidia cards. If you're doing only photo and video editing, it might not make sense to go with this one. I'd probably go with the Arc A770, especially if you're using Adobe applications it is so much better bang for buck but if you're doing maybe something in davinci resolve and some 3d then this gpu is the one so a little bit of a jump from the gpus but it kind of the rest of them don't make sense for most of the creators and that's what i would do you don't have to go with necessarily this sort of gaming design you can go with other designs out there just type in rtx 4070 ti super in there and i'm going to leave some options in the description below and try to find the one that you like the most now the psu upgrade it's not necessarily needed here but i'm going with this 1000 watt power supply the previous power supply can actually still support everything that i've mentioned in this upgrade path even the gpu upgrade but this one here because of the higher capacity it can support the power supply is actually going to run the whole system even at full load at much efficient rate and will support better upgrade options in the future so it's going to save you a little bit of money the more you use the power supply just because you're be your PC is going to run at the more optimal efficiency rate in the curve there. It's not massive, but that's what I would go for. So if you upgrade to 1490 later on, this power supply also supports that if you want to do that. And it's only a $30 upgrade, so perhaps worth it. Now for the case, I've left it the same because the case is not necessarily going to give you more upgrade. But if you have a little bit of budget to spend, have a look around some of the cases what you like out there. I'd check out some of the other fractal cases or some of the minimalistic looking cases or some of the fish tank cases that you, if you like your PC to be on the display. There's lots of them out there, but the best bang for buck, I can still go back to the fractal design focus two case. Now, all of these upgrades cost you extra $679. And the total of all of the upgrades, if you bought all of the upgrades is $2,174.11. Now, very importantly, the upgrades are mix and matchable. Let's say you are a 3D creator, you like all of the lower end $1,500 budget, but you want better GPU. Just get the upgrade GPU slotted in there. You know, Bob's your uncle, off you go. Or you want more RAM, just put that one in. You want better CPU, get that one in. Get more storage or however, that's the best bit about PC building. You can mix and match and build the one that you like. You might be getting to this point of the video, hopefully not. I think you probably know this already, but you, if you don't know how to build this, there's build guides and setup guides and setup tutorials. Everything I'm going to leave in the description below. So even if you've never built the PC before, you can just follow that. Just it's all linked down in the description below now if your budget is a lot smaller or a lot bigger there's some other parts in the description below as well so this is part two of part four so highly recommend checking out those videos as well i'll see you in the next one thanks guys for watching bye bye